I understand that uh, you have taken uh, many pictures of uh, UFO and uh, of the yeah. Radian. Um, how could you, you know, take those photos? <laughs> That's a very funny thing. I have my film camera, my photo camera. Yes. If I go outside, the most of the time, I carry them with me. Mm -hmm. But I never can get a picture mm -hmm. if I not get the order to shot one. Mm -hmm. If I can get the picture only by an order of the Pleiadians, and then I will get a real good picture. Did they tell you a reason why they order to take a picture? <laughs> For proof. Very amazing, amazing pictures. And uh, may I ask you your background? Mm -hmm. Could you tell us about your background? I mean, your profession, what you're yeah. doing? You see, my whole life I was working by about 300 or 320 different professions. 300? Mm. Oh. So, uh, uh, what were you doing when... Just you now I call myself as a watchman. Watchman? Mm. Well, what do you mean, just uh, looking up the sky? No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe in Japan too you have the night watchman. Uh -huh. Something like that. So you were working... The last business I was doing was a watchman here in Switzerland. Oh. Well, and now I'm living from my rent only by 830 Swiss francs a month with my wife, three children and two other persons. So how, how can you get the money? That's a, a rent from the government. Rent? Yeah, for my cut with arm. Oh, I see. Uh... It's about the third part of that money what needs an other family in Switzerland with uh, five or six people. Mm. That means uh, government giving you the money or yeah. the company? Mm. The government? It's a, a government company. Uh, I see. Mm. And they pay a monthly rent. Mm for my cut at arm, oh, 830 francs. Uh, so before then you were working as a watchman mm -hmm. uh, with with some company? Mm -hmm. Yes? Uh, oh, some factory? Uh, or? In a factory, yeah. In a factory. Yeah. And uh, other time in Zurich by mm -hmm. a watchman company. Mm. Oh, I see. Mm. And... Uh, 1975? Uh, 1974, I finished my job. Uh -huh. And still, from that time, I living from my rent only. Oh, I see. I'm writing, take my photographs and everything. I see. Now, so you were... I'm writing down everything from the contacts. Mm -hmm. The knowledge, mm -hmm. uh, knowledge, mm -hmm. the spiritual teaching, and everything. I see. Now, uh, when you take a picture, mm -hmm. uh, could you describe how you're gonna do? How mm. you do like this? Very easy. Yes. You know, that's a very simple old Japanese photo camera. Yes. I can turn here. You see. Yes. Oh. And that I can do very quick by one hand. That's a single camera I can use. Uh -huh. You can't change anything here. You can see by yourself. Okay. And it's very easy to use in one hand. Mm -hmm. 
I say that's the single one I can use. All the other they are too complicated because you need two hands to handle them. Just take this way. Yeah. It's very easy. That's very yeah. easy. I see. And it's very quick. And uh, you know, when you you are taking a picture. Mm -hmm. There should be uh, many people working on the road or, mm -hmm. you know, uh, living in the house mm -hmm. and, uh, or, you know, running the mm -hmm. car. Mm -hmm. They might see the same no. thing. You see, that's very funny. If you take this here, mm -hmm. I think that's now the ship. I'm staying here with my camera. Mm -hmm. Everything around the ship down, behind, by its side, will be closed. Nobody can see anything. There is a free line only to see something through here, the camera. Mm -hmm. Or to my face, to my eyes. Mm -hmm. Then I'm staying here, get the picture, uh, to get the picture from the ship. You stay there by the lamp or by the tree, mm -hmm. you can't see anything because there the sighting will be closed for you. How it only it? will be open this way to the camera. And this happens the most time. How could they do it? I don't know. <laughs> they have, you know how about this one? You, you use the tripod with this? With them, yeah. Yes. I put it on the tripod, mm -hmm. then I have here an automatic, mm -hmm. and then it works. I see. And two, it's a camera that I can handle by one hand only. Mm -hmm. It's here. I see. That's the single one I can find. Uh -huh. Mm -hmm. And uh, at that time, uh, when was it? It's, uh, it was outgoing winter time, I think 1976. Six, the same year of that uh, young shot. It was the same day. A uh, same day? Yeah. Uh huh. And uh, yeah. how the year? Sosa coming. Um, um, we have got to go there to the front to tell you. Mm -hmm. um, you see there behind the mountain. Yes. About a third part from here to the mountain. Yes. The ship was moving from the left side to the right side. And uh -huh. Right side, left side, left side, right side. Mm -hmm. Always on that way. Yes. And then, at later time, before it left, by sunset, it moves behind there the tree. Mm -hmm. You have seen the picture, and there I got three pictures I by see. my photo camera. So, so how many hours are together from uh, the beginning? All together, I've been here up for about two hours. Two hours? Yeah. How many pictures did you take? Uh, between... 70, 90, 100, I don't know exactly. Hmm. Most of them I lost somewhere, stolen, <laughs> I don't know. So this is the site where uh, you took the picture the UFO and uh, actually how did it come did it fly yeah at first I took the film mm -hmm. the movie and then it was flying always that line yeah. forward and back forward and back mm -hmm. and then at the end when was going down the Sun also by the sunset mm -hmm. 
it moves here behind, mm -hmm. few meters behind the tree, and then I got here three pictures. Oh. And the sun was somewhere there behind over the horizon. And how many minutes it stayed here? Oh, this was maybe 20 seconds, 30 seconds, not more. Mm. And then that time I got these three pictures. It was maybe, I don't know exactly, maybe five meters behind, three meters behind, I don't know. And when was it, this one? Uh, that was 1976, I think. Mm. 76? Yeah. Should be autumn. Yeah, okay. it's uh, outgoing winter time. Right. And it was uh, right after the sunset or before sunset? No, before sunset. You see here behind, mm -hmm. behind the ship is the sun. Yes. So maybe six o'clock, five, six. Between five and six, I, I think it was. Yeah. It was evening time, mm -hmm. but the time I don't remember exactly. But I think it's very huge one, like this. Mm -hmm. uh, where was the uh, UFO? The uh, about three to five meters here somewhere behind here. the tree. Yes. Yeah, somewhere here up. Oh. And nothing behind the tree. There is nothing behind the tree. A deep valley, that's all. Right. But this ship is very huge. Mm -hmm. Maybe seven meter. Seven meter across. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You see, you can't go over all the world to tell each human being mm -hmm. this happened now on that way that's now the truth you can get the analysis from a computer mm -hmm. but to the people not will believe right, right. so the if they see the ship by themselves mm -hmm. they get the picture then for them it is true but right. if somebody else get the picture they say that's a fake only. Right, right. So did they tell you why they are not going to show up himself? I mean, they, themselves, you know, why they don't come uh, visibly mm -hmm. to the people? Yeah, you see, they told me different reasons. One of them is they thinks and means and says if they turn over the sky at day or night time mm -hmm. and the people will see them, the mm -hmm. earth people here, they will come to be afraid. Mm -hmm. Maybe they will turn over in their mind or mm -hmm. something like that. Mm -hmm. And it will come a panic. Mm -hmm. The other thing they say they have to be very careful about their own weaves from their own body and about the weaves from the earth humans. If they come together, they will turn over in their mind because they are living in every case on a very much higher level than the people here. And if they go to show them by their flying around the earth, the humans, the earth humans, they will try to catch them. Mm -hmm. They will, by the Air Force, send up planes, fighters mm -hmm. against them. And about all that, they are very afraid. Mm -hmm. But I think they have, uh, you know, uh, much better science than us. Mm -hmm. So they can, you know, 
protect themselves mm -hmm. for from the from the air force attack yes of course that's very <laughs> easy for them but you see i think it isn't useful mm -hmm. why they shall show them to the humans if they go to fight against them mm -hmm. It will make trouble for them, for us humans from this earth, and maybe for other ones. Because the Pleiadians, they aren't the single one who comes to earth from other stars. This is That's the village Hinwil, on the side of a plain. Yes. That's area around Hinwil. Cows, how you see. Mm. So this is the area where the UFO is coming yeah, yeah. many times. And there to the right side is coming the Bafo mountain. Mm -hmm. Behind that hill is the other, what we call Bachtel Hörnli, where we got the film yesterday. Mm -hmm. That's the east side. Of Hinville, that's mm -hmm. the west side here with the lake of Zurich that you can see in the background. Mm -hmm. Then the lake of Greifensee mm -hmm. is coming on here now. There to the right side is coming on now Lake of Pfeffikon. Mm -hmm. That's the north outgoing road from the village Hinwil. Mm. There to the right side the Catholic Church. Mm -hmm. That's the beginning of the village Hinwil. Mm -hmm. Two on the north side. <coughs> That's our house where my family and I was living at the uh, year 1975 mm. when was going on the contacts by 29th of January. It's our house again. Mm -hmm. 29th of January uh, 1975. You contacted uh, with Semyase. Uh, Semyase. Yeah. Uh, at the name of the street, Vihalden Street, number 10. I see. That's my wife. I, without beard at that time. Mm -hmm. Here again. With somebody from Germany. Mm -hmm. So. With playing stones. 
This film taken in 1975. 1975, yeah. Your house again? Yeah. Isn't it a bit too big for your family? Yeah, it was a very big house. That's the other side of the house with our dog, my wife and the smallest boy. That's the first contact place outside of Hinville. Mm. It's a natural place. Mm -hmm. So how did it happen? You came here by by motorcycle? By my motorcycle, yeah. In the afternoon between one and two o'clock, I think. Mm -hmm. And there, on that place, I got at later time, some few months later, uh, the sound of the ship. And this here again, the first landing place mm -hmm. of the ship. There where, I, where I'm staying, she landed with her ship. 29th of January? Yeah. Yes. What is the street? That's the sighting to the north side. Mm -hmm. There was staying three pine trees. Mm -hmm. At later time then, months later, I have seen that I was eliminated by Semyazi. Mm. There I show where was staying that three trees. Mm -hmm. And there in the background you see a small pine tree. Mm. There I got the sound of the ship. And wow. where I'm staying there was waiting the witnesses. Mm -hmm. And that's a uh, other landing place at later time. Inside the forest mm. where we get then landing tracks. Mm -hmm. This is the landing. Yeah, it looks like a triangle and each of such a landing track has in diameter 182 ccm. Mm -hmm. Centimeter? A cm, yeah, centimeter. Is this the first time track of the UFO? Is this the first contact one? Oh, I think so. This was the first landing tracks we got. And they were staying there for about two and a half months. Mm -hmm. And the grass always in a track is turning to left side and in, it didn't cross up again. Mm -hmm. First, if you cut the grass mm -hmm. and the new grass is going up, then it grows up again, not but, but not before. I see. And uh, when was it happen? Did it happen? Please? When did it happen? Oh, this happened 1975 too. In the middle of the year, I think it was summertime. Mm -hmm. But you see, I don't remember exactly. Mm -hmm. There you can see the turning grass. And that's a footstep from a pilot girl. Mm -hmm. Who is the name? Semiaze? No, Playa. That's the sister of Semyazi. Mm. Only one uh, footprint? No, there was some more, but the other one day wasn't clear. Mm. And there isn't any sign in it. It's flat like a table. Mm. 
These are the landing tracks again. Mm. Of one of power ships. Is this also a uh, fast uh, first time you got uh, the, the landing tracks? Track? Yeah, yeah. And this is the, uh, the waste site now <coughs> and the ship the ships they left to the north side then and there you can see how big are the trucks. Hmm. Very big. So it was almost a seven meter diameter. No, the landing trucks they have one hundred and eighty two centimeter each one. Uh -huh. And three of them are by each ship. And that's a place where I got the first movie picture. There was a tree staying, how you see it there, where mm -hmm. it's hanging over them, the ship. And that tree was eliminated later by Simyasi too. Mm -hmm. And that picture I got, I think, February or March 1975, mm -hmm. in the evening time, about half past five. It was mm -hmm. snowing, raining. And dusty, and in the front between the tree and my film camera, there was some people working a farmer, an old man, and a child. Mm -hmm. And if you have good eyes, you can see the ship, it isn't in the front of the tree, it is a little bit behind the tree. Yes. And this flying doesn't the normal flying of these ships. Mm -hmm. That's for demonstration only. Mm -hmm. If they fly on the real normal way, you have seen there how I was moving the tree mm -hmm. now. If they fly on the normal way, they have a good line without this foolish jumping and everything. I see. Uh, is it the again? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. だからね、あの部分だけを独立的角度考えるから、あの、聞いてるところからあそこへスーッと詰まった方がいいんじゃないかな。この前をね。これだよ。When do you know when? Yeah, most of us are Now I think. Just a moment. You see? Ah, yes. Because it comes to the front, overflies the tree, and then it jumps. Right. Okay. だね。これだ、この後すっとるよ。これ、あ、これ。ああ、いいな。うん、見えた。これ今アップ、一番アップしてる。よっしゃ。いや、もう一回戻して。まだ、まだ。今映ってる、撮ってる。もう一回やる。
You see it? No. Oh. Right there. いや、今だ。ね。あんまりヒーターわかんない。このぐらいでごまかしとかでくれるね。ね。うん。下になっちゃってね。これだと下のが出して、なんとかフレーム取ったのを あの、ファイオプラットとはいえ、フットがなかったら今のうちに。これちょっとこの急でしで行っちゃうの。いや、これこれカットバーで違うんだったらあの、ゼロに。はい。じゃあ、どうしていくかいこの後どこ円盤の
Yeah. You see, and the ship is about uh, half away mm -hmm. to the road there down. Oh. When we were staying yesterday by the forest. Yes. You remember? Yes. Uh, that's the first place in Rumlikum we was yesterday. Mm -hmm. And here the ship is jumping away. There the film isn't cut on Can that you? place when the ship jumps away. It's nearly the speed of light and you can't see anything. It is here and it goes. You see, and at that time when the ship leaves, then was gone all the wind, all the voices of, of birds and everything what's happening around. Then you can't hear anything, you can't feel anything, not a nice piece of wind or something. It all comes back at that time when the ships, uh, the ship returns and myself by the camera I had something like an electric shock ちょっと。ちょっと。ちょっと。ちょっと。ちょっと。ちょっと。ちょっと。ちょっと。ちょっと。ちょっと。ちょっと。ちょっと。ちょっと。ちょっと。ちょっと。ちょっと。ちょっ
But you know, he cut it, put mm -hmm. one piece to the front, one piece to the back, the other one he took out and so. Hmm. How about this? Is this the same one, same yeah. day? The same day. That's all the same film. Mm -hmm. What do you think about? Mm -hmm. That's a working with my zoom and I was looking over the camera, not ah, into the camera, I you know. あの、向こうからこっち来るのとこっちから向こう行くのはそのまま撮ってるでしょ。うん、撮ってるけど、フレームでギリギリだからね。え。ま、フレームギリギリだから上のワークを入れるぐらいのがなんかして。うん、その
Can you repeat it again? You see, if she jumps, there is always like a flash coming mm -hmm. on. And sometimes I got a small electric shock. Oh, you got... Uh, Each time when she was jumping. Mm, you got to why, I don't shock. know. Uh -huh. That's the east side yeah. where we got yesterday the pictures. Oh. There behind in the middle, you yeah. see, in the saddle. The mountain where we was this afternoon. What is where we was climbing up the road. What is the month? Month? The mountain there behind where we was climbing up today by the cars. I know? see. Uh, what month? Uh, Langenberg, I think, is the name or something like that. Where we got today the pictures, mm -hmm. you know. 1975. Two, yeah. Um, uh, no, 1976 mm -hmm. on March 28th or 29th of March. Mm -hmm. So this is the first uh, film which we, we could take. You could take three of the uh, crafts. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Three yeah. I think where we leave the other two ships there, the film is cut, that I think. Do you know what is the... Uh, no, I don't know. Mm. You see that stair up where we was this afternoon, where was so very much wind. I see. Could you uh, repeat it again? That's the new type of the UFO? That's the new type there, yeah. Yes. But what's happened with this guy? You see, the picture was more to the right side than we got today. Oh, yes, yes. So the Kyoto to the middle. It's buckling. Mm -hmm. You know, the wind there. Mm -hmm. And that wind is there of the whole year so strong. Mm -hmm.
Is he coming back again? Yeah, uh, several times. She turns well, from the left up. to the right and back. You see, they are still within the number range. When I left the place there, I was frozen outside and inside. Mm. Yeah, I should be. It's always very cold there, too, in the summertime. I see. But this is winter. Yeah, that's oh, winter. I thought that you wrote an article. I can repeat it.
Mm. You see here I have done exactly the same thing than in room Nikon. I was looking mm. over the camera and working with the zoom. Ah. So you didn't you didn't see the window? No. No. <laughs> there always I was thinking to get the warm coffee. <laughs> You repeat it, please. Yeah, what is in the show? No, for the whole time the ship was staying always on the same place it wasn't moving yes what is going on The ship from Sanyasi, when she was starting after a contact and flying up into the sky. Then she changed her color, it was some like firing from the red, it turns yellow and then very white the light. And there she was sometimes jumping very terribly. And it was about uh, one and a half 
or one mile away from the film camera. Mm -hmm. You see now the color changing. Mm -hmm. And that's 1976 too, in the middle of the year. Mm -hmm. You see there two landing trucks from two Lurian ships. Yeah. They have uh, three meters in diameter, oh. and by the Lurian the ships, player. everything will be burned mm -hmm. when they start again, mm -hmm. because they have under the ship some <laughs> balloon of gas, mm -hmm. and that will be exploding mm -hmm. if they start, and then it burns everything if it is burnable. Did you check the radiation? No. We only have seen the ring outside is very sharp cut. Mm. And burned inside. And inside everything burned. And about uh, an hour later mm -hmm. inside it was full of insects. Oh. Every kind of insect you can find here in Switzerland. Oh. But outside there wasn't anything, not one insect was going around there. Mm. Everything was inside of the burn. And they they were alive? Were they yes, they still was alive. Oh. Mm. That's Konrad Schutzbach. Mm -hmm. What is the white one? The ash? Ash. I see. We cannot see insects now. No. It's, the picture is not very clear. Mm. But from the beginning. Mm -hmm. uh, that small tree I shot by the laser pistol. Uh -huh. What I got from them to test. This and the uh, and the burned tree at the same time. Yeah, at the same time there. Uh -huh. yeah. So at that time, two ships came down. Yeah, yeah. In London, one was uh, Menara, mm -hmm. and the other girl I don't remember the name. What is this? Oh, what is this? Nothing. Nothing. On June 12, 1975, the Pleiadians directed Edward Meyer to the location where he would succeed in taking this remarkable 8mm movie footage. By comparing the size of known objects to that of the UFO, the approximate diameter appears to be 7 meters. Through the beam ship can be seen to float up and down in a gentle manner. But as we continue watching, we will soon realize that this film contains a rare sequence. The moment when the UFO disappears suddenly. Meyer says that the beam ship can travel through multiple dimensions. We assume that this is that moment of transformation. In this segment, not only does the craft disappear possibly to another dimension, but it also returns.
Next, the film is checked to determine if some type of trick has been used. Beginning the examination where the object disappears and reappears. Now, examine the film frame by frame. It is discovered that the actual disappearance occurs in only one frame, in less than one twentieth of a second. After extensive analysis was completed on this segment of the film, it became clear that there was no trickery involved. Now, examine the exact moment that the UFO reappears. This time as well, there is no detection of trickery. Surprisingly, when the craft appears, the frame becomes very bright. This means that there is some type of energy affecting the film itself. It occurs within one twentieth of a second, the exact time required for the ship to reappear. In June of 1975, Mr. Meyer set his 8 movie camera on automatic, so both he and the beam ship could be captured in the same scene. Meyer explained that this is the location where he sat to wait for the craft to appear. Meyer took great pains to create this scene as he wanted to establish proof that he was indeed having contact with the Pleiadians. His method? Arranged to film he and the beam ship simultaneously. And then the second time I was sitting here. During the first few moments of this segment, the craft is not visible because the MTV video camera that filmed off of Meyer's original 8mm footage has a smaller viewfinder. The zoom work is being done by the Japanese video crew. The small camera is set on automatic and secured to the tripod. The whole picture looks about two and a half or three minutes. The beam ship can clearly be seen floating silently and gracefully while posing overhead. Meyer says a strange calm prevails just prior to the appearance of the craft. Even the birds in the area stop their singing and movements, becoming very still and quiet. Perhaps it is because birds and animals have the ability to hear or have the sensitivity to detect the unseen energy or frequencies of the UFO. Meyer shows Yaoi the location where the beam ship first appeared and explained that it moved from left to right, right to left, and then back again left to right. The beam ship can be seen hovering above the mountain at Hasenbo. Then suddenly the ship begins to move. Closely studying the movement of the craft, it seems possible that the object is suspended on a string, perhaps connected to a long pole. But carefully watch the branches of the tree, which is to the right of the screen. It is obvious that the wind is blowing fiercely. But the beam ship remains perfectly still. This observation leads us to believe that the ship is not a small model suspended by a string. If the ship were suspended by a string attached to a pole, a different form of movement would be seen. The beam ship can be seen to stop in midair, without any form of hesitation and no wind-related movements. If the object were a model suspended in some manner, it would react much differently in a strong gusty wind. This ship stops and does not waver. When the beam ship begins to move, it sails smoothly without any hesitation. This indicates that there is no physical obstruction of any kind.
During a replay of the footage, a forward and backward movement will be observed as the craft stops, if it was suspended by something. For convenience sake, lines will be drawn where the ship stops and where it begins moving, affording the observation of any unusual wobbling or swaying. It is obvious that the beam ship stops abruptly. Zooming in on the beam ship, one can see a light, possibly some type of energy, as it begins to move. The understanding of what this is, or could be, is limited. Only theories exist. From the analysis of this footage, we know that there is a gusty wind, yet in contrast, the beam ship remains stable. At this time, Meyer was using the zoom lens on the 8mm camera. A difficult feat for a man with one arm and the reason for the lack of centering in the viewfinder. At times, the spacecraft emits a burst of light from the top of the cupulo and the flange or rim of the circular object. While filming this segment, Maya recorded the sounds of the beam ship, as indicated by the Japanese subtitles. Watching the footage and listening to the recorded sounds, one can readily determine that when the craft moves closer to the recorder, the strength of the noise increases, thus indicating the strong vibrational frequencies emitted by the ship. On March 29, 1976, Meyer took this outstanding series of photographs of three beam ships hovering over a wide valley near Bakhtil Hornley. It is an extreme rarity to capture three UFOs in the same photograph, especially with the clarity of these. But to Meyer, this remarkable photography had become commonplace. The video crew hiked to the site where an old farmhouse stood near the edge of a steep mountain cliff. This is the location where Mr. Meyer filmed both still photographs and 8mm motion pictures. Meyer remembers that when he first arrived at the site, he was nervous, excited, and wanted to begin the experience immediately. Then, without warning, the beam ships arrived. As in previous segments, the ship is not affected by the strong wind currents. He also noted that they repeated the same stable movements exhibited in the past. In the lower part of the screen, automobiles can be seen traveling on this major thoroughfare. Meyer captured the same scene with one addition, a UFO hovering overhead. This amazing footage captures known objects, cars, and an unknown object, the beam ship, on the same frame. 
もう一度今のシーンを見てみよう。Here, the Japanese utilized the freeze frame technique in order to determine the size relationship of the beam ship to the car. This 1979 MTV footage shows the site where Meyer shot his 1975 sequence of the beam ship hovering near a farmhouse. As this footage dissolves to Meyer's original film, note the beam ship beginning an aerial display above a large tree which once stood near the farmhouse. Meyer recalls that he was guided telepathically to the location and that the weather was bad. Snow and rain fell throughout the day. Once again, the erratic movement of the craft gives the appearance of an object suspended by a string or wire. Close examination of the film clearly shows the craft circling behind the large tree. When the size of the beam ship is compared to that of the tree and the house, it becomes obvious that due to its size, it would be impossible to suspend with strings or wire. In addition, the top of the enormous tree can be seen to move as the craft passes over it. This movement can be attributed to the backwash of air created by the ship. Watch again. Once more, the branches can be seen to sway from the force of the beam ship. Mysteriously, within three hours after the filming, Meyer noted that the tree began to die. Inside of three months, the tree was gone, leading to the conclusion that perhaps the electromagnetic radiation or energy contained some harmful elements that might have killed the tree. This segment clearly illustrates that the Palladian beam ships are capable of transcending dimensions at will. Watch closely. The craft is seen hovering in the upper portion of the screen. Then suddenly, it will literally jump down to a point just above the knoll in the lower center of the screen. UFO がこのような瞬間移動をするとき、なぜかわかりませんが、私の体に一瞬電気のようなショックを感じるんです。Why I don't know. Now we will examine the film frame by frame. Analysis failed to detect any alteration or trickery in the film. At the moment of the dematerialization or jump, the scene becomes very bright, unreasonably bright. Could there be a correlation between Meyer feeling an electrical shock during the contacts and the film becoming brighter? Now analyze the beam ship's dematerialization scenes we reviewed earlier. Three frames prior to the disappearance, a green exposure is observed in the lower part of the scene. The same phenomenon occurs within three frames of the return of the craft. 
It is believed that this film indicates that the beam ship is emitting some sort of energy within three twentieths of a second, just before the ship dematerializes or rematerializes. We close this investigative report with some final comments from Mr. Edward Meyer. The materialism way doesn't the true way for the life of a human being. There are two points who are very important, or they are very important. That's the materialism way and the spiritual way. They have to work together. Not only one of them have to work. And to change this again to the real way, to the connected way by materialism way and spiritual way, they come here again to teach the earth people over some few minutes. Mm. So, uh, how That's many... the only reason they have. That's their own saying. Not to, to bring war to earth or to bring peace to the human here on earth by themselves. Mm -hmm. If we want peace and knowledge and love and everything here on earth, we have to change everything by ourselves as human beings from this earth. This true story that took place in Switzerland is far beyond common knowledge or understanding. The beam ship footage taken by Edward Meyer is astonishing, but it's so clear that it's almost too good to be true. Because of this, there are many people who do not believe this case is real. Despite this, the evidence presented in this video investigation has been backed by facts from many scientific fields of study. Still, each individual must personally decide for themselves their levels of beliefs concerning UFOs in general, and more particularly, this case.